everyone in this video i will be going over my solution for the problem named net destroys the universe taken from today's global round this problem is an excellent problem which teaches us about the max function which is the minimum excluded element and the max basically gives us the smallest integer x such that x is not contained in this set so if we query a set al al plus 1 all the way up till ar and if we put that into the max operation then it will tell us which integer is the first integer greater than or equal to 0 which does not appear in this set so for example if all elements are positive then the max will return 0 if 0 is present but 1 is not present then the max will return 1 and similarly if all the numbers from 0 till x minus 1 are present then the max operation will return, will return x because x is the first positive integer or the integer equal to 0 which is not present in the set which we ask uh, when we call the max function so that's the max operation uh, it's basically this and we need to find out whether we can make the entire universe uh, uh, of all elements in the array a equal to 0 by performing the max operation on subarrays so we need to figure out um, the minimum number of subarrays which we should apply the max operation on so that all the elements become equal to zero so obviously we can do this by casework like the first case is when all the numbers are equal to zero then obviously we'll just print zero because there is no operation needed uh, then another case could be uh, let's say that uh, initially there are a number of zeros and then there is there is some uh, elements which are not equal to zero so if you apply max on all the elements which are not equal to zero then we will get the max equal to zero because we know that the max of uh, of a set which contains all positive elements is zero because like that's from the definition so once we query uh, like in the second example if we query the range one to five if we put that into the max and if we do the max operation on this range we will just convert all of these to zeros and that's why only one operation is required and another case could be like there are multiple such uh, arrays which contain only positive elements so in this case there are two elements which contain only positive elements so in these cases where there are multiple subarrays which contain only positive elements the idea is that you should apply the operation on the entire array and then you should do that twice basically so i'll be explaining this idea with this example so let's say that these are the this is these are the elements of the seventh length array so the array basically contains 0 2 3 0 1 2 0 something like this and we need to make the entire array consisting only of zeros so the key idea is that first you apply the max operation on on the subarray containing all positive elements so that's this this case like that's one idea so that will basically ensure that these become zeros and then again we apply the max operation on the subarray containing only positive elements so that makes it all zeros and hence we can conclude that only two operations are required and in this case we got lucky that two is the answer however in general if you try to think about it and if you like um, think about a random array which contains multiple such patterns of only positive elements so if you think about this as an example then if you apply the same logic which is considering only these positive subarrays and if you apply the max only on them we know that we will get all zeros because the max of all positive elements are zeros so we know that this is one possible strategy to apply the max on subarrays which contain only positive elements however this idea fails when uh, in this case it fails because in this case it's actually optimal to do a better strategy so this uh, strategy which i just said which takes the operations isn't the optimal strategy there's actually a better strategy so the better strategy is uh, is to consider so let's consider the same array but let's do something more clever 
let's apply the max operation on the entire array so applying the max operation on the entire array will help us because if you first apply the max operation on the entire array then what will you get you'll basically get the uh, you'll basically get 5 so uh, so all the elements become 5 because we know over here that for the ent the entire array will get set to the max so the entire array will get set to 5s and once all these elements get set to 5s what can we do we can apply the operation again on the entire array and that will set all the elements equal to zeros so we know that in the worst possible case what we can do is we can apply the max on the entire array only twice so only two operations are required in this situation so that's why the best answer is not three or more the best answer is always two now or uh, that this is what I claim will happen in general subarrays. So in any subarray in any array given to you, you can apply the max operation on it twice, and applying the max operation on it twice will give you a subarray. We will give you an array consisting only of zeros. That's why the answer can be at most two, and you can uh, verify intuitively that like this will always hold true because if there are some zeros in the beginning and there are lots of positive elements then applying the max on the entire array will give you some positive number. So in this case, it was five. In another case, it could be something like nine, 10 or anything, any positive number. And once again, if you apply the max on the whole array, you'll get zeros because the max of any number X is just equal to X. So that's just equal to like, that's just equal to zero. And uh, that's why um, uh, you can just apply two operations. So this is actually the key observation required to solve this problem. The rest is just simple casework. So this is the worst case. So the worst case, only two operations required. The best case is obviously, uh, if all are zeros, then this means that we just print one. Only one, or I mean zero, because you don't do anything, zero operations. So uh, this is the best case and the worst case. So obviously, which is what is left uh, is the slightly tricky case uh, of finding out when the answer will be one, when answer is one. And in order to find out when answer is equal to one, what you need to realize is that the answer will be one precisely when you look at something like uh, a couple of zeros, then a subarray consisting of only like positive elements. Um, some random elements like this um so a summary consisting only of positive elements and then a number of zeros so if you consider this then the answer will be one because you just apply the max on this this summary which will give you all zeros and hence uh, you can just print one and the key reason why this works is because so what you basically need to check is check if exactly one subarray l to r exists such that all elements in l to r are positive so all ei for i belonging to l to r are positive uh, all ei are positive and uh, and all and no zeros exist in the summary and no zeros exist because it's a summary consisting only of positive element and and uh, all elements outside l to r should be zeros so all elements outside l to r should be equal to zero because again we want elements outside l to r to be zero so just such that so that when we apply the max on l to r we get max of l to r will give you all zeros and anyways outside l to r everything is zero so that's why we need to check whether exactly one summary exists such that all the elements in that range are positive and all the elements outside the range should be zero and now to implement this we can just find out what is so an implementation detail could be find out the smallest position of a zero find out the smallest and largest positions 
find smallest and largest positions of a zero and check if the range from the smallest position to the largest position are all positive and check if the elements in the range 1 to l minus 1 and r plus 1 to n are all zero so you can do this simple check uh, using the just boolean variables and loops to find out whether there's only one range l to r so once you check this condition if this condition is true you print one otherwise you print two and that's just essentially the full logic so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea so in the code um, which may look complicated but actually it's quite simple uh, first we take in the number of test cases for each test case we take in the array a first we initialize all zero to be equal to true so it checks whether uh, all lm all ai are zero or not and um, like and l uh, l comma r stores the smallest and largest positions where ai uh, is not equal to zero so actually we can like implement it easier by storing storing um so l comma r actually stores not the position of a zero but the position of a positive number so store the largest and smallest position of a positive number because we know that we want every element in the range l to r to be positive and we want all elements outside that range to be to be zero so that's why l comma r stores the smallest and largest positions where ai is not equal to zero or ai is positive basically and then what we'll essentially do is once we read in the values of ai and we update l and r to the correct values we will obviously first check if all zero then we will print zero because there are no uh, max operations required otherwise otherwise we'll check if the answer is zero which will happen if and only if all elements are zero so for that we update that uh, boolean variable in the loop and once we check whether uh, answer is zero or not uh, we go to the next case where answer should be one or two now in order to check whether answer is one or two we do three loops the first loop checks whether uh, so basically this is something like boolean valid a boolean uh, is answer z answer one and that's initialized to true uh, basically answer will not be one if there exists a zero which comes um in between uh, one to l minus one one to l minus one or r plus one to n so if there's any zero i mean if there's any positive number which lies outside the range uh, 1 to l minus 1 and r plus 1 to n then we will just set is answer 1 to be equal to false um, otherwise uh, we need to check whether uh, whether all elements in the range l to r are not equal to 0 so basically what i'm doing is all elements in the range 1 to l minus 1 and l plus 1 to n should be zeros and all elements in the range or uh, l to r should be positive so that uh, we are ensuring that um, only elements in the range l to r uh, like all elements in the range are positive so that when we apply the max on l to r uh, we get a zero and we also need to ensure that all the elements in 1 to l minus 1 and l plus 1 to n are zeros so that once we get zeros in the range l to r we can combine all those zeros with the previous existing zeros in the other ranges and we get the entire array to be zeros if that is possible then we print one because only one operation is required which is the range l to r otherwise we print two and the reason why we need only two operations is because we apply the strategy which i described over here of just applying the max on the entire array twice and you can review this point uh, by uh, rewinding the video in order to discover exactly how we can only apply two operations in order to make all the elements of the array zero and in order to make thanos succeed 
so this is the entire solution for this problem so if you have any doubts in any part of the three cases which are described do leave that doubt in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you